What's up, Earthlings? Welcome back to Minecraft Explore. You're here with me, Alien Waldo, and you're we're back again with the Witchery mod. This is, uh, I believe, part 13 now of the Witchery mod. So, last episode, if you remember what we did, uh, we did some uh, some more advanced circle magic. We used the new Otherware ritual chalk to make a waystone and teleport with that waystone and I actually have some here that we aren't going to be using today but uh, just to show you that I am using the waystones and we also used the infernal chop to use to create the ritual of blight and that uh, that was a lot more powerful than I thought it was going to be today though we are going to be creating some uh, a few different things but uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna make ourselves look a little more like a witch or a warlock in our case, in my case, anyways. So let's just jump right into it. We'll just start here. The first thing that we are going to have to make is what's called impregnated leather. Uh, it's basically just leather that uh, you uh, we do some extra stuff to. So hold on here. So. So, oh, oh, there we go. So I need 16 of these. So as you can see, I've got my 16 leather here. So you go ahead and put those in just like that, I do believe. Um, we put the diamond vapor in the middle and the whiff of magic around the outside. So remember, guys, if you need me to slow down, I'm not going to. You just pause the video, basically is what I'm saying. So anyways... This is how you make impregnated leather, as you can see there. Go ahead and pause that if you need to. But now we've got 16 impregnated leather. So we're just going to leave that for now. The next thing that we need to make is golden string or golden thread. I can't remember if it's thread or string. It's the same thing, though. That we're going to need to use the spinning wheel again, which we haven't used much of since we first made it. So this should make enough for us to use so we just need to put a uh, hay bale in there and a whiff of magic down there in the spinning wheel and that's gonna get us some golden string so we just gonna we're just gonna give it a minute to do its thing and we'll like uh, there we go so we've got th thread it's thread not string there there we go so that's our three golden thread we only need the six of them and uh, that'll be that'll be all and let's grab those here. Okay, great. So we have uh, almost everything. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it back to daytime. Alright, so let's just kind of hop back out here. Do a quick creeper check. Because that's just the worst. And uh, actually, that problem is going to be solved today. And you'll find out why very soon. But the first thing that we're going to be doing is the very iconic... Something that everybody always thinks of when they think of a witch, or a wizard, or a warlock, or whatever is the pointy hat. Yes, we are making a witch's hat today. So for that, we need four impregnated leather placed just like that. We need to take two of our golden thread and put them on either side of that, in that middle roll like that. And one glowstone dust at the bottom. And as you can see, that gives us a witch's hat. Now it gives us a 35% chance of a second brew. So if we are brewing over with the kettle and we are wearing the witch's hat, we have a 35% chance to get an additional brew. So we'll go ahead and put that on. So there we got our witch's hat now. So that's step one to making ourselves look a little more uh, magical, I guess, if that's how you want to put it. The next thing that we're going to be making are the witch's robes. Same idea, it uses the impregnated leather. It also uses a creeper heart. Creeper hearts are a very rare drop from a creeper. I've only gathered four of them in my entire time playing, and two of those were gathered with uh, an Arthanus. The Arthanus does, of course, increase the chance that a creeper will drop a creeper heart when it dies, but it is still a very low chance of dropping. If you put looting on your Arthanus, of course, that increases, the, uh, increases it further. But uh, I do have enough luckily for today so I didn't uh, have to go out and find a bunch but anyways to make the witch's robes we put the leather around like that 
we put the creeper heart right in the middle and then we take one of our golden threads and put that on the top so that as you can see that makes our witch's robes and we get another 35 percent chance of a second brew except necromantic brews and i'll get into that in a moment it also means that creeper while we're wearing this creepers will generally ignore us so that means we don't have to worry about creepers sneaking up on us anymore and blowing my stuff up, my beautiful stuff that I put so much time and effort into. So we'll go ahead and put those on now too. And let's take a look. So as you can see, we've got the hat, we've got the robes. We're looking pretty cool right now, if I do say so myself. It's really uh, coming together, this ensemble, this ensemble of witchery. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to be making are icy slippers. Now that's going to be uh, footwear. It's not as important. It doesn't give us extra... Oh, did I mention that the, these effects, these percentages actually stack? So that's actually a total of 70% chance that we'll get a second brew when brewing on the kettle. Just wanted to throw that in there. Anyways, like I was saying, icy slippers, they don't have that potion thingy, uh, whatever you call it there. The uh, extra chance to get a brew. They don't have that at all, but uh, they do have another cool effect that I'll get into. First though, we need an icy heart, which will require a creeper heart, a gas tear, and an icy needle. And as you can see, you put them in order just like that, you're going to get a frozen heart, not an icy heart, a frozen heart. Now if you take your frozen heart and, got to come back here and here, two diamond vapor in order of purity and four impregnated leather. You put them together just like this, so you want your four leather, impregnated leather, on either side like that. You want to take your golden thread, put it at the very top like that. Take your two diamond vapors, put those in the two bottom corners, your order of purity in the last bottom slot, and of course take that frozen heart and put that right in the middle. And that's going to give you icy slippers. It's cool to the touch. It freezes nearby water and turns lava into obsidian. But it does do damage to the shoes when you do that. And it does have a low chance of burning you. Let me show you exactly what they do. So we'll put those on now. And now we are going to lose our haste buff. But we still have the speed buff because we have the legs on. The topaz legs. Which is good. That's the important one. That's what's going to make us uh, move faster. Anyway, so these icy slippers, well, let's take a look at it. Oh, yeah, that's nice, eh? That's pretty cool. We got those icy slippers on. The colors don't blend as well, but I do believe that um, you can dye them and you can enchant all this stuff too. So I guess I should mention the witch's hat, witch's robes, icy slippers, and the necromancer robes, which I'll talk about more in a moment. They all have the same durability and armor rating as leather. They can be dyed and enchanted as well. So if you want to change the colors of your robes, feel free to do so with any old dye. Now I'll show you what's actually really cool about these slippers. Now like I said, it turns lava into obsidian, but it damages them, and there's a very small chance that you'll also get burned from it. But the coolest thing about them is this. Aha, you see that? Now, I didn't, I didn't plan for that to happen, but that's fine. This will all melt eventually, because we're not in an icy biome. But it basically turns the water underneath your feet into ice, so it allows you to create an icy path to walk upon. Look, I can actually climb up the mountain... Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. And no, I'm not. There we go. Okay, we're down. That'll fix itself eventually once the ice all melts. But anyways, yeah, that's uh, what the icy slippers do. And it's extremely cool. Really useful. It's, I mean, self-explanatory. How are you going to use that? I shouldn't have to go into that. You, you use it to walk across water, basically. So that's our Witches Ensemble. Now we're a complete witch or warlock again in my case. Is it? Uh, no? Okay. I thought I thought the uh, the back kind of flipped up, but it doesn't. And now I still have those pants on. They kind of go a little high. Uh, uh, but it's okay because it, it works because of the speed. It gives me the speed boost. That's, that's, yeah. Anyways. So that's our Witches Guard. Our, our ensemble, as I said before. The next thing you're going to do is another extremely iconic thing that you would see from a witch or a warlock, mostly witches, you kind of 
put these together. First, though, we are going to need a drop of luck. Now, as you can see, I've got so I've made a few changes here. I've got these stairs here. Uh, makes getting around a little bit easier. But one other thing that I did uh, is I improved my apothecary. I made it a little more streamlined. I, I guess you could say uh, it's bigger. You'll see. You ready for this? Bam! You see that? My new apothecary. Gives us space to have these circles around the cauldron, which as you know, decrease the amount of power some of the uh, brews in the cauldron require. I added this section down here. I moved all of my books onto here. So I have all these books here. I've got some shelf space. I've got places to put my uh, potions and brews and all that kind of fun stuff. I got all my materials right here in the open where I can see them up on the wall. It's fantastic. I'm loving it. I really am. I've got my distillery here, brewing stand, and the clock for decoration. Guys, this, honestly, since putting this together, things have been so much easier. It's been so much easier to stay organized. I love it. Anyway, so that's that. Let me grab my buckets here. I guess I'll just, you know, I don't need the Arthana down here. So I'll grab my buckets full of water. We need to make drop of luck. I don't know if I said that already. And now that this is all set up, I also, uh, oh, I did actually go and find my own actual wither skull. So I do have uh, a lot more power in my altar than I did before. So that's that. And I got these circles around it, so we should have no problem with doing any of this right now. So we'll go ahead and we're going to make our drop of luck. So if uh, you guys remember how to do that, we need Mutandus Extremis, which won't go in right away. We need Refined Evil. Also doesn't seem to want to go in. Tear of the Goddess will work. Nether Wart. Mandrake Root. Let's go back and throw the Mutandus Extremis. The Refined Evil. They don't seem to want to go in there. Come on. Get in there. Get in there. No. <sighs> Why, why do these things happen to me? Why? Oh, man. Okay. Bear with me, guys. I'm gonna have to, I don't know, figure out why this isn't working. Just hang tight. Alright, guys. So I'm gonna give this another shot again. I'm pretty sure everything has to go in in order. So it goes Mandrake Root, Nether Wart, Tear of Goddess, Refined Evil, Mutandus Extremis. Let's give it a shot and see if that works. We'll put the Mandrake Root in, the Nether Wart, Tear of the Goddess, Refined Evil. There we go, Mutandus Extremis. That's what was wrong. So that's something definitely you got to keep in mind. Uh, at least with the drop of luck anyways. The thing, everything has to go in, in, order, in that order. So uh, make note of that for yourselves so you don't make the same mistake I did because it's uh, it's frustrating. So we got that all solved though. We've got our drop of luck. Drop of luck always seems to give us a bit of an issue. Whatever, that's fine. Okay, so now we have our drop of luck. Let's go back out and it's night time out. So we'll only have to worry about zombies. We shouldn't have to worry about creepers. Look at, let's see. Let's just see. Oh, that is so cool. How often do you get to... Ooh, there's skeletons. How often, though, do you get to just walk up to a creeper and say, Hey, how's it going? Now, so yeah, I can attack it. I can kill it. Nothing happens. He doesn't even care. That's awesome. That's 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 great. Now, the necromancer robes, I, was, I said I was going to get into those. Necromancer robes are made the same way as the witch's robes, except instead of a creeper heart in the middle, we put the necromantic stone. And while wearing the necromancer robes, undead mobs won't attack us. So that means zombies and skeletons for the most part. Uh, they will not attack us, but creepers will. So you got to pick your, pick your poison. Honestly, I'd prefer not to have creepers sneaking up behind me. I can take a hit from a zombie. That's just fine. It's, uh, it's not fine when I have to fix a whole bunch of stuff that a creeper blew up yeah all right so the next thing that we're going to be making is more redstone soup so I've got all the stuff for it here 
And uh, so we'll go ahead and make that. And that is made over in our kettle. Now I, I put the bucket, one of the buckets away. I should have kept at least one of them. Let me grab that bucket real quick. Grab one bucket. Just one bucket. There we go. Okay. We got our bucket. We'll go fill up our kettle. Get that going. And we'll make some redstone soup. Hey, buddy. We're buddies now. Yay. We're friends with the creepers. <laughs> okay. So let's go over here. Throw that in there. We'll put in our drop of luck. We'll put in our mandrake root. Our belladonna flower. Tongue of dog. Wool of bat. And redstone. Give that a second. Squirrels are white. That means it has been done correctly. Grab our bottle. Fill up our bottle. Redstone soup. Couldn't ask for a more perfect uh, brew, right? That went smooth. No issues. Awesome. Alright. So, now we are going to be making... Let's grab all this stuff here. Uh, another thing in the kettle. Actually, I should keep my bucket out for that and I also didn't grab an extra jar for that that's okay my bottle uh, the next thing that we're going to be making is flying ointment now you're you might be wondering what we're getting at now if you remember I said it's another iconic witch item something that everybody can sort of uh, picture when you when you think of witch you usually always think of this so that's the only hint I'm gonna give you for now and after we make this flying ointment, it'll all be clear to you what we're doing. But we'll make the flying ointment first. So that requires the redstone soup, the belladonna flower, the wool of bat, the feather, the diamond, and of course it requires a potion of swiftness, the max duration version. That's a vanilla item. If you guys don't already know that, As you can see we've got the white swirls. That means it's right. And there we go, flying ointment in our jar. So the last things that we've got in here are two sticks and three hawthorn saplings. Now what could we possibly be making with those? Well, we'll take our two sticks, put them out the middle like that. We'll take our hawthorn saplings, spread them across the bottom like that, and we have our broom. Oh, a broom. A broom and flying ointment. Wonder what that means. Okay, I'm sure you guys know what we're doing already. We're making an enchanted broom. Yes, so and it went first off, actually, do I have chalk? Good, I have chalk. So an enchanted broom, first off, a broom actually is handy all on its own because normally you say, oh, I don't want the circle here anymore. Hold on. Zombie problem. I think that was the only one. Yeah, okay. Normally, if I don't want the circle anymore, I've got to do this to every single thing and it's just it's not it's not fun right it takes a long time but if you have a broom it's instant you just click on it with the broom and it sweeps up the chalk pretty cool now that's just one function of the broom I mean and the broom as is that's all it does there's nothing else to it but and it's of course it's the one time we want it to be nighttime. Okay. So the next thing that we have to do, and I have the book of circle magic here, so we'll look into that. We have to make, where is it? I do believe technically it's an infusion. It's binding, charging, uh, transposition, bestial call, manifestation, sanctity, imprisonment, protection. Hold on, no, we're down here now. Um, oh, it's right here. Rite of Infusion. There we go. So this is, this is not, not this Rite of Infusion. We need a different one. Uh, let me see. This is the one. So we have to perform this at night. We need a 7x7 seven seven and an 11x11 11 11, uh, ritual chalk circle and 3000 altar power. We just throw the broom and the flying ointment in the circle. Let's see what happens. So we'll get our flying ointment. We'll throw that in. We'll get our broom. We'll throw that in. Activate the heart glyph. And 
and we have ourselves an enchanted broom. So it looks like the broom except it's got the enchanted effect on it. It still works like the other broom. Oops, you were supposed to see that yet. It still works like the other broom. It still gets rid of uh still gets rid of the the glyphs with the click. There's no durability on it, so you can get rid of, of as many glyphs as you want without having to worry about it breaking. <laughs> But the primary reason that you would want an enchanted broom is if you right click it places it like that. You can even push it around if you want to. And if you right click again you mount the broom and then you can fly. Yes. The enchanted broom allows you to fly. Now I mean it kind of looks a little silly from this point of view. It's, it looks cool as well but it also looks silly. I'll explain that in a second. Um, but yeah, it allows you to fly, so you obviously you can get around a lot faster. Again, if you're not playing with commands or anything like that, you're playing a pure survival game. This is great to get around. Uh, it lets you fly in the game normally. Now, to go up and down, you don't hold shift or space bar. You actually look up and down. The broom goes wherever you're looking. But as you can see, it turns quite wide. That's about as sharp as it turns. Now, if you go straight backwards like that, it kind of turns a little sharper but even still the handling isn't the greatest later on down the line you can get a fam you can get familiars if you're not familiar with familiars they're basically like little magical pets that follow you around and they provide special bonuses uh, you can get an owl familiar that increases your speed and handling for the broom so it makes it a little better uh, a little easier to control but that's all we're that we're actually going to be putting together today is the enchanted broom. We've got our witch's clothes on. Now we look. Don't we? Legit? Come on. Right? Absolutely. We looked apart. Now I want to show you, as you can see, my forest is growing quite large as well. I'm quite proud of my forest. This here was actually a, a rite that I performed. What was it called now? It's over here. Not Earth's Wrath. Not Sky's Wrath. It was nobody's Wrath. Uh, no, it wasn't. Nothing broke. Nothing moved. Nothing broiled. Uh, was this? No, not that one. This is the one. Right of Nature's Power. With an 11 by 11 circle, you just need a brew of sprout sprouting. Uh, almost all of the different types of saplings. Almost all. And a charge to Tombstone. Yeah. And that happens. That was in the middle of the desert. That was all desert. I didn't place any of that. I just performed the right. And that happened. It was, it was actually really cool. Oh, jeez. I fell on the... Well, that's cool. I didn't know that. If you hit a cactus with your broom, it actually uh, just... You, you fall off and your broom gets picked right up. But anyways, yeah. So as you can see, there's... There's witchery mod plants in here. There are normal trees. There's grass. There's melons. There's pumpkins. There's... And you can see the circle here, that's where it started. So the circle started here and it grew out uh, this much further away from it. So it's a really cool right. Um, it is, of course, uh, limited in its space. It's bigger than the circle itself. It's an 11 by 11 circle, but it's, uh, it's still kind of small. Like if you're trying to change an entire desert this way, it's not going to work. There is another right that I am working on yeah. Um, it's taking a lot of time because there's a lot of new things that I have to get for it that I don't already have. So it's, it's taken some time, but I am working on it. It's called uh, Right of Changing Seasons, Shifting Seasons, and apparently it changes the biome. I'm not 100% sure how it works yet because I haven't been able to perform it, but I'm excited to try it out. I was going to try it over here in the desert uh, in this little area just to see what would happen. But uh, that's all there is to it today, guys. Uh, I also wanted to show you one more thing, an aerial shot of last episode when we performed the Curse of Blight. This is what actually happened. Absolute chaos, as you can see. It destroyed the land. Like, it went from, there's still some grass and some flowers and stuff, a little bit, but it went from all of this. It was just grass covering everything to this destruction it's just destroyed everything it killed everything there were, remember there was animals that got killed like devastating if you let that loose on uh, another player on their base or anything like that it would just not be not be pretty 
But that's that's it. That's all. Uh, I moved my uh, skull thing over there. I was doing some stuff. We don't have to worry about that right now. And, um, well, the ice is still there, too. It'll go eventually, I'm sure. Right? I'm sure it will. Anyways, that's all we have time for today, guys. We made ourselves look more like a witch. And uh, I'm happy we did it. It's going to make things easier. We don't have to worry about creepers blowing up. And it's quite frustrating when the creepers blow up all my hard-working things. I'm this powerful warlock. Why do I have to deal with creepers? Well, now I don't. And uh, so, yeah. That's all there is to it, guys. Thanks so much for coming out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave it in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like button on this video. Let me know that you like what I'm doing and you like Minecraft Explorer videos. Let me know if you want to see uh, what other mods you might want to see in the future. We're almost at the end of our focus on the Witchery mod. And then we'll be moving on to uh, a different mod. But uh, we'll still have the Witchery mod here. We'll still make some episodes with it, I'm sure. But uh, yeah. And uh, definitely, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That helps out so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Every time I see even one new subscriber, it, it just makes me feel nice and warm inside. So I really appreciate that. And uh, also, I wanted to mention, landing these things can be tricky. But if you look at the back, and you constantly just look at the back, then while looking down, then uh, you'll you'll it's a lot easier to land that way. But uh, yeah. That's all there is, guys. Thanks for coming out, and I'll see you later.